Update corn here, reviewing Dope Discussions live with Danica Marie. The subject of the video, or the name of the video, is called She Fell Off and Doesn't Care. Please like the video as you come in. I was sent this by a male subscriber, and I place very high value on my regular male subscribers who are regularly present and all that jazz because, um, I feel like it takes a whole lot of love for African-American women and compassion and empathy for African-American women to be over here in a space where I speak about swirling and divesting so often, right? Um, and for them to be here, to be members of my channel, to not only be subscribed, but to support me monetarily, I take the things that they say seriously. Uh, one of the reasons why I struggle with identifying myself as divested because I really truly believe in what Crystal and Karazin says when she says character over color. And recently when she proved, when she proved by sticking by one of her black male friends that it's character over color, someone called her a mammy. I don't know who did or why they did that, but truly that is the proper way to be. In reality, Dusty's come in all colors and the point of divesting, the point of leveling up, the point, the point, the point of all this self-improvement is to be better, do better and have better associations, right? Because that is conducive, more conducive for a happy life, a happy and healthy life. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. I heard the first few minutes of this and um, I was really very impressed with her delivery um, because it's very common sense. It's a very down to earth um, delivery that is uh, straightforward, you know, straight no chaser. Um, it's not often that um, I see content that is from the other side of the tracks or, you know, I, I've learned to stick to spaces where I know that I know that I know that I am safe. Okay. Um, so I think I was a member of this channel. I, I definitely was a member of this channel for a while. And I, um, would always encourage people to send big donations, but I definitely saw some people, um, come on to this particular platform that, you know, I, I could never approve of, um, not in a million years. Um, because of their anti-African-American female rhetoric and because of their colorism. And I'm so against those things. I just kind of, um, again, it goes back to safety, right? I want to feel safe in my person and my mind, body, spirit. Like, for example, when I go, when I go to Call Me Coco's channel, I'm totally giddy, bubbly, excited, making jokes, playing with everybody in the chat. And it's just a, it's just a good old funky time. And that's what I like. So, um, but like I said, like Danica alone by herself is cool beans, right? I just, um, I try to stay away from certain people that uh, the sister has collaborated with, with all due respect, because um, I really don't like drama. I really don't like drama and I really don't like um, farces, fraudulence, like just... I have strong opinions about that. Without further ado, here she is. And I'll be offering commentary throughout. And let me just go ahead and say that she does not need my commentary. All of this is good by itself. I will link it in the um, description below. But um, I'm just doing this again. Um, a valuable subscriber sent this to me. And I'm just going to say what I think. So here we go. What's up? <laughs> Sit down. Have some seats. Her face is like we're like water. with her. Okay. And we getting ready to hop into our dope discussion for this evening. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Take this time out right now to like the video, share the video, subscribe, and most importantly, hit that notification bell. That way you guys can be alerted and notified, hopefully, for the next time we have another dope discussion. Okay, you guys, so today we're going to be talking about something that I feel will be a little bit uncomfortable. 
However, it's for the greater good of us all, okay? Um, let me first start off by saying this. I understand that there's a lot of women that may not like my content, may not uh, understand where I'm coming from. You guys think that I am just caping for men. I'm bashing women. Um, and I'm pandering, right? And that couldn't be anything further from the truth. I'm actually trying to speak truth to power to give us a little bit of constructive criticism and tough love because a lot of us are not getting that, especially not from women, not modern day women anyway. You know, today there's a lot of pacifying. There's a lot of patting on the back. There's a lot of acting as if women do nothing wrong. We never drop the ball. Whatever a man does to us. So again, this is probably because I am on the other side of the tracks with, um, you know, and I, I want to do better about naming content creators, but since we already have one in the video, I'm just going to go, go on ahead and say, because I do so much hanging out around the pink pill and the Shira Seven, a Shira Star Goddess, and, and a lifestyle by Danielle, um, I don't have that perspective that she has in terms of, you know, women can do no wrong. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, strike stroking one another. You know, I, I don't know where that happens or where she's hearing it, but I know in my neck of the woods, um, we do a lot of holding one another accountable, especially in the level up community. I mean, that's pretty much what it's about. Like we're quick to talk about, you know, gym memberships and trainers and <laughs> lose that weight and femininity and evolving as a woman and in a loving way of letting one another know that like, you know, what your mom taught you, what your family said about, you know, people are just gonna love you because you're a good person. That's so not true. That's so not, <laughs> that's so not true. And I definitely have to credit people like, um, share a star goddess for being blunt with the message. Like I will always be grateful to her because um, she gave it to a straight no chaser. Like sis, no, you need to level up. You need to level up some more. Nope, that's not working for you. Not that lip color, not that hair color. By the way, I wanna say really quickly, we must stand a sister with natural hair and Danica has it. All right, let's continue. It's no fault of our own. It's all because something is wrong with him, right? And while I understand, ladies, that that can be the case, especially if you're choosing to be with low vibrational ass niggas, I get it. You know, that, that, that does happen. And unfortunately, that happens a lot because we unfortunately choose wrong a lot. You know, a lot of us are attracted to toxic men. A lot of us are attracted to those broken men that we have to try to show and prove our value to, which is why we find ourselves so consumed in those relationships in the first place, because we're we're chasing validation from a man that does not value us. That's so funny. The moment she said we're chasing validation from a man who does not value us, I immediately thought of the man who, well, Kitten Hills, you can go on ahead and go to change.org and there is a petition to remove him from YouTube. Um, there are YouTubers who I'm affiliated with who, you know, on their channels, I don't talk about this, but on my channel, I definitely, I have it on my community tab. This is my position and I'm willing to stand in it. But immediately I thought of him because there are so many women who call and I'm like, dude, dude, like, this is not a guy who values black women, period. Period. I mean, unless you're super close to the European beauty standard, unless, 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 like, and oftentimes it's looking like um, something people refer to as vag uh, vagina envy. I'm not going to pretend to know the man's sexual orientation, but I mean, growing up in the church and singing in the choir, like he's got all the attributes of the homosexual uh, choir directors and all the, you know, he said he was in ministry right before. Anyhow, um, 
I think that's one of the biggest examples of women looking for this toxic validation that she's talking about from men who don't value you. And for the life of me, I can't understand why, um, I can't understand why anybody who understands that as a message would deal with a person like that. Um, I think she's spot on. So I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and carry on. Right. And we do that repetitively. Right. So I understand that that does happen. However, I feel as though a lot of us are not really taking accountability as far as the instances where it's not that man. It's something that we did wrong. Somewhere we dropped the ball. And a lot of women are not calling that out and letting us know where we're coming up short, why certain things are happening. And I'm starting to realize when she says a lot of women are not letting us know that maybe it really has nothing to do with YouTube and the YouTube community. It probably has to do with, you know, where she's from, where she's come up and, you know, local communities perhaps because um with as much content as i consume of uh, i mean well myself and others um some of the others that i've named that i'm going to have to stop <laughs> naming but um i've seen some very recent live streams that are like sister look at you it's you like you have to change you have to cut it off you have to stop it and the power is in your hands i know this uh this Kendall St. Charles, who has inspired some of the strongest women, um, I believe, that are in the black sector of YouTube, she lays it on us thick. And most of us are some form of a disciple of hers, maybe not clinging to her each and every word, but definitely she's, she's lit a fire up under our behinds in terms of you need to work on you. And this is this is why because like, kendall will run away from us okay she will be like nope and like nope herself off the planet nope herself off of youtube nope herself off of a clubhouse whatever it is like nope y'all are hard-headed it's this is this so again i think danica is speaking from personal experience as opposed to you know the, this online community because i think the sisters um that i frequent you know are, are very direct with, you know, do do the Michael Jackson, do the, the I'm starting with the man in the mirror and I'm asking him to change his ways. And why our relationships are failing. So tonight, you guys, we're going to be talking about women pretty much falling off. And I want to talk about the different ways in which women can fall off. I know instantly your mind is going to your weight, your body, um, how you look. And unfortunately, of course it is. That, that is something that is a major element as far as women falling off. However, we're going to be breaking down and getting into numerous ways that women fall off today and why that could have a negative impact on our relationships. Okay. Y'all go ahead and take this time. Y'all like the video. We should at least have 115 likes, 120 now. Y'all like the video. Let's hop into our dope discussion. But before what we, we do, do, I just like I the video. We have awesome. It's a crown and showing love early. Uh, shout out to you, Chicken Nugget. That's hella funny. Your name, hella funny. Shout out to you, Chicken Nugget. He says, Love you, sis. Love you back. Okay. And is that little Bill? Is that little Bill in the damn profile pic? <laughs> It is. <laughs> that is funny as hell. But shout out to you, Chicken Nugget. You are hilarious for that. All right, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and, and jump into some of the ways that women fall off. And unfortunately, ladies, a lot of us don't give a damn that we fall off. We don't give a damn that we're no longer putting in any effort or any work. And this is where men are coming to me. And they are telling me, hey, you know, I'm kind of done with my woman. She is completely neglecting herself. I'm not attracted to her anymore. I don't want her anymore. I feel bad about it because I have invested so much time and energy into her. And maybe we do have children and we do have a family. Maybe we're even married, ladies. 
As quickly as I can, I want to say something about that. First of all, zero disagreement. I think uh, a lot of married women run into this. Um, I think we're, we're getting a little bit more woke as women, or like I said, at least in my neck of the woods, as far as uh, the nature of men. Um, I just lost that all that good trail of thought. So yeah, I definitely think um, women fall off in terms of looks and part of the reason they, I, I think women may not understand how important it is and they're only just now learning because we didn't understand these certain gender differences, especially if you grew up fatherless or in a single mother uh, household, you weren't really exposed to the nature of men to that point. And even if you did have your dad in your life, you know, however much he was there or not there can affect what you think or know about men. And also some of these women who fall off, did you hear what Danica said about how some of these men, they're like, you know, I've invested so much in her. That's the reason he doesn't leave. And so they think, well, if he doesn't leave me, what do I need to lose the weight for? Because he's not leaving. He's not willing to leave. He's willing to cheat. But some of these men will, you know, vent, oh, I'm leaving my woman. I'm leaving my wife. I'm leaving my girl. I'm leaving my baby. And they don't go anywhere because, you know, it's been 14 years of, you know, shared income and houses and assets and whatever they built up. And he has this connection. Oh, I feel so bad. And even if it's from, I mean, I've seen... It's a sad thing, but I've definitely seen men who stay because of pity, but also men who stay because it's literally cheaper to keep her. That is not just a saying, it is a fact. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important not to be with a broke man. Why it's so important to be with a man who invests in you because the more a man and that men put their money where their heart is. The more a man invests in you, the less likely he is to go anywhere. So I'm hearing her, you know, about how these men are like, I'm through with her, I'm through with her, I'm through with her. But part of the reason she's not losing the weight is because in reality, you're not through with her. In reality, you're going to stay right there. In reality, men like the idea of bragging about a, a, a 10, 20, 30 year long marriage in spite of the fact that they've got a whole family, you know, Martel, Marceau, Love and uh, Mayor Tunsville family across town. Right. So they're not really leaving these women who are falling off. Um, I mean, maybe if she's some kind of a 50 50 ride or die who's paying her way and he hasn't lost very, or he hasn't sacrificed very much in terms of investing in her. And I think that's another reason why certain types of men like for women to give them money so that, you know, they can just basically pick up and go. But when you do that duty as a protector and a provider, you feel more attached, more anchored and more obligated to stay and to make that family unit work. Uh, we're going to go back to listening to her. If there's a slight delay just because I'm muting myself and then clicking on the video because I don't want the audio. Um, I don't want my audio to interrupt hers. Y'all men are coming to me. And y'all are in relationships long-term relationship y'all had whole families built and your man want to leave you because you fell off in multiple ways and you don't give a fuck and so ladies when we do that and we don't care anymore we no longer are holding ourselves to task what that does is and a lot of us don't want to hear this i understand what that does is invites other women the opportunity to come through and get your good man. Oh shit, oh shit, there's some pick me shit already. Oh Lord. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Not the zoom in. <laughs> now that was facts. I, I loved all of that. Chicken yeah. nugget in her lap, man. I'm dead ass serious. Eugene and her small big Shirley, magic in her laughing, Booyah Smith. Look, hold on. I don't know why they're laughing. They need to be typing, you know, hold on, facts, no printer. Yeah, 160 likes. He said, This is my low key account. Yeah, that's that little bill shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So. There are women that are out there getting left. 
and they don't have a clue as to why. And unbeknownst to them, it's because of this. Let's all this. I'm sorry, this reminds me of that song by Kelly Price. You should have told me I wasn't small enough. You should have told me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But you let me on and kept me on. Now sing, uh, sing I'm percolated. Like, whatever. I don't know the lyrics. Kelly Price is never really my uh, my thing. And I can um, actually have a very deep story about why she was never really my thing. But, um, yeah, I actually think that there are some mixed signals that are going on here because these men will have these women who, I, I mean, look, I believe that the people she's talking about in her camp who watch her channel, I believe that they are leaving their women. But um, a lot of the men that I'm used to being around, they have too much stock invested in their women to leave. And instead, uh, the response is infidelity. And... Uh, I can do you one more controversial than Danica by saying that I actually have empathy for that. So there's that. First of go physically. Okay. You fell off physically. Now, we want to go ahead and jump into this first because I know this is the first element that a lot of you guys uh, went into. That's the first thing that your mind went into when we say, oh, she fell off. Well, that's, that's the case, sis. That's a real thing. And a lot of us like to be politically correct and act as if, oh, you're beautiful no matter what. That man should just accept you and take you for who you are no matter what. It doesn't matter that you gain 215 pounds. pounds. Yes, it it does. doesn't matter that you, you, you gain 75 pounds. Yes, it it does. doesn't matter because after all, you've been with him for X, Y, and Z years and you gave him two kids 20 years ago and all of it. He should just take you as you are. And I'm here to tell you, ladies, right now, this is the type of bullshit that gets us left. We get comfortable. Let me tell you. We get comfortable. And this is something that you never do. Now, I understand, ladies. We do. I want to stop her and say that. As much as I agree 100% with her, I've never been in a super long-term relationship. And what I mean by that is that um, I've not been in a 10, 15, 20 year relationship with anyone ever in life. Again, I've not been in a decade long, dozen year long, 20 year long, 30, I, I've never done it in my life. So, as much as I agree with this, the women who haven't been in a relationship for this long, like myself, I don't feel like I can speak to this. I don't feel like I um, I have the right because I've never walked in those shoes. I've never been with a man for 10 years. I've never been with a man for 20 years. I, I don't know what that's like. I don't know, like, like relationships, people evolve every seven years. They want the different things. They become different people. And if they're lucky, they evolve in the same direction. And if they're unlucky, they don't. And they try to work it out for the kids, yada, yada, yada. This is why I said to someone earlier, excuse me, on a live stream um, some weeks back that um, Crystal and Karazin's, excuse me, Crystal and the Pink Pills, 20-year marriage is a success because those kids are big. Those kids are grown and they were raised in a two parent household with their natural parents and they are trust fund babies and they were socialized in the upper echelons of society. And, you know, once it was saved to part, they parted and they're still good friends. I mean, it's an amiable separation. I mean, it's an, it's an amicable divorce. That is a success because marriages are about families. They're about families. And their family is intact. They're not like some torn apart, horrible, ratchet, public, nasty, knock down, drag out. It, there's none of that going on. That 20 years of marriage is a success, whether you keep it or decline any, any further years together that's a success 
And it was funny because of people who were saying that it was Miss Success had the nerve to. <laughs> I mean, it's like, how long have you ever been married? Okay. If you, if you have not been married for 20 years or more, I'm going to need you to pipe all the way down. But with that being said, while I totally, totally agree with the sister, I have never been in a relationship for that long. And I don't know what happens at that point because I have 0% experience with it. I have experience with letting myself go. I have experience with getting lazy, depressed, like all that kind of stuff. But I don't have experience with the maturity of a 10 or 20 year relationship. And so I don't speak on it um, because I don't feel like I have that right. We give birth, we get pregnant, um, we get happy weight, all of those different things factor in, right? Maybe we're stressed out and we're depressed and, and, and maybe we may eat uh, over consumed that way. There's different aspects that go into why a woman can let herself go. And I understand that. However, there's a lot of women out there that don't care to get to the underlying problem, the root issue as to why they're letting themselves go physically. And quite frankly, they don't give a fuck about how it is affecting them. So she says there are a lot of women out there who don't care about getting to the underlying issue. And I will not belie her and disagree with her um, because that's her experience. So she's saying that it must be true. But I know in my experience um, with looking at women, with befriending, with knowing, with having these right in these long 10, 20 year relationships, in my experience, Right. Not negating her experience. But in my experience, it's not that they don't care. It's that they don't know. They don't know. And they don't they don't know how to get to that underlying issue. Black women are still discovering depression. They're still discovering anxiety. They're still like like we are so late to the mental health game. It is not even funny. We are the last in line when it comes to, you know, going to therapy and really working through your issues with a counselor. We are the last people like, oh, you just need to pray that away. Oh, you just is like, all right, well, 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 I've been praying and I've been on my knees. I need knee pads. You know, my, my ankles are sore. I've been sitting on the floor. I've been crying. I've been snotting. I've been praying. I've been hoping. I've been wishing. I've been turning these Bible pages and, you know, can't figure out why I'm still so depressed or why I'm still so suicidal or why I'm still like, there are a lot of people who don't know how to get to the bottom of the is issue that's causing them to let themselves go. They don't have the wherewithal. They don't have the knowledge. They are truly ignorant. Black people have gotten the hang of, okay, how, how to change my food because I'm all, you know, about this soul food and it's giving me diabetes and all kind of problems. We, we, we've gotten there, you know, a chunk of us, enough of us, not all of us, but the whole mental health scale, which is part of the reason people let themselves go. It's part of the reason people will show up in a bonnet and a robe, but the combination of a bonnet robe and house shoes in an airport. That's not, oh, you know, it's, it's, I, I just am so confident that no, that's depression oftentimes. And sometimes it's undiagnosed and we just think, oh, well, everybody told me I'm just a bad person with an attitude problem. And it's just like, sis. I see you gave up because you, you, you just don't know. You don't know how to dig. And partner. So while you may be dealing with depression and stress and children, and, or maybe you're too busy, whatever the case is, you neglect the responsibility of making sure you're not only looking good for yourself and feeling good for yourself and you're being healthy for yourself, but for your man as well. Do you guys know how many women out there right now today, hell, they're not even dealing with stress like that or depression like that. They, they don't have to work. They, they are stay at home wives and mothers. Their man put them in a position to where, hey, baby, you good. Because initially you were 
physically in shape. Initially, you were taking care of yourself. You were helped. I'm going to just go on ahead and say right here, right now, in the, in the vein of keeping it real, Danica is telling on me. Right here, right now, she is telling on me. I mean, when she said something about that happy weight, honey, I have put it on. When she's talking about women who have been put in a position to be like, I'm a stay at home girlfriend. Um, I've obviously gotten into a couple of things. You can check out all my new websites, whatever, with the hair care, with being a new columnist for Hip Hop Uncensored and so much. But like, I'm telling you, I put on the happy weight and it's just like, okay, sis, chocolate was going on, uppity was going on. Like, you don't have kids. You don't have, you know, some stressful job. Like, what is going on? And there are things going on that, you know, I'm obviously not going to say on a live stream, but I mean, I've also been put in a position to, you know, talk to my partner about getting a personal trainer and talking to my partner about gym memberships and talking to my partner about getting braces and talking to my partner about blah, 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 blah. But definitely, um, I'm one of those women who, who didn't have an excuse. And if I had an excuse, it wasn't much of an excuse. I didn't have a real reason to put on the weight that I put on. I know you guys saw like when I um, when I started YouTube versus uh, now. <sighs> um, I mean, I don't have any of those old photos posted up anymore, but like all over my Instagram are photos where I first started YouTube versus now. And um Definitely quarantine had something to do with that, but even with quarantine, I I could have been I, I could have been doing better. So um yeah, this is this is uh we, we've hit a point where this is very relatable. And yes, I'm doing something about it. Putting yourself together. The young man say, you know what? She is a prize. Y'all know y'all love that damn term. I, you were a prize to him. Which meant that, hey, you look the part. You act the part. You were the part. You tickled my fancy. And a lot of us sleep on the man nature, the male nature. And men are very visual creatures, very physical creatures. And a lot of the times, ladies, I know this sounds shallow as fuck. A lot of the times your man chose you because of the way that you looked, first and foremost. That was what got you in the door. That's what got his attention in the first place. And we talked about, quote unquote, pretty privilege in a previous discussion. It's now for members only. So become a member and go uh, watch that uh, discussion that we have. But. We talked about pretty privilege, right, you guys? Y'all give us 223 likes. I'm seeing 222 and 223. I don't know. Yeah, I just like the video. You had pretty privilege, which is why that man that was well-to-do chose you in the first place. Like, like, you know, know what? what? She's, She's so damn fine. fine. I could overlook certain things about her and mold her and shape her. Whip her into shape, get whatever flaws that she has. I correct that shit. She's so damn bad. She's so damn fine. I can get it. I, I, if I can just tweak this, I can get her how I, I need her. her. I, can I just her. want to interrupt this. And and say, number one, this is true. And number two, this is why a lot of those men are in cells now. This is why a lot of those men are complaining about women now because they will they will go for pretty. <laughs> They will go for the prettiest, and I'm just like, you know, this sister may not be as pretty. That one might be an eight, and this one might be a seven, but that seven has character. That seven is not going to cheat on you. That seven is not going to abuse you verbally, physically, like, but they will go for that eight because when she puts on that makeup, she's a 10, and they're like, yep, nope, I can deal with it, and then they're writing all these sad R&B songs, you know? Hey, I mean, the choosing better? Yeah, that goes both ways. <laughs> the women are having a hard time choosing better and the men are having a hard time choosing better. Um, yeah. 
actually came to the relationship with all kind of personality flaws and all whatever. Things that he did not like. But because you carried yourself a certain way, you looked a certain way, guess what? He was like, you know what? I'll deal with it. This is I'll facts. Yeah, she a little feisty, but I can, I can deal with that shit for now. Facts. Yeah. Men will let you be all kind of feisty and all kind of out of line. I mean, I've seen it. Um, I've always been a little bit more subdued in my personality, but I've definitely seen the girls who are popping off. And, you know, I, I've heard the men were like, oh, we don't like black women because of their attitudes. And I'm just like, little baddie, the, the little Latina baddie you got over there is worse. <laughs> the little gangster uh, Asian Vietnamese, whatever girl you got over there, you know, the inner city hood uh, Asian, she worse. <laughs> Stab that guy and they're still together. Got him jumped and they're still together <laughs> because she looks amazing. And I'm like, okay, okay, y'all, okay, now let me just get her fine ass now and I'll turn that shit around in a, in a week, That's whatever, a month, whatever. That's what got you chosen in the first place, is your physical attractiveness. I want to add one to that because um, <laughs> I want to add one to that. Uh, there was a time in my life where um, I was a very devout uh, Muslim and um, I covered everything but my eyes. So I wasn't just in hijab. I was in something called niqab. Okay. And that is a veil that covers uh, everything on your face but your eyes. And not only are men very visual, but boy, are they audio. I mean, so many men who, pro who proposed to me, it was off of self-carriage and the way that my voice sounds alone. And of course, I'm a, I'm a decade older than what I was when I was, you know, doing all that stuff. My voice was like teeny tiny version of this one that I have now and super high and feminine and like whatever but like i'm telling you these men were like swooning from all over the world because of that sound that sound the sound of a voice because when they hear you speak and it sounds nice they start to thinking you know can she sing they start to think about you know intimacy you know how does she sound when she moans like it, be, it becomes a thing where they just want to talk, talk, talk your ear off. So I think that men are visual, they're audio. And as far as the census go, my partner did something really interestingly. Uh, I went back on, um, you know, I, I um, started taking care of my hair uh, deci decidedly again, right? Because I kind of let my hair go. Again, we're talking about letting go and women falling off. And, you know, this is me being accountable. Um, wh whatever I identify with here, I'm going to go ahead and say that. Um, ju just to add to the dialectic. But um, I put henna in my hair and I added honey to the henna and um, water, coffee, you know, and by the time I cleaned it all out of my hair and I'm from all over my bathroom and my partner came over, he put his face in my head and he was just like, mm. and I'm like, he, he was like, you smell good enough to eat. You smell like honey. And I'm like, how can you smell the honey? I just had Hannah in my hair. And like, but like he had men have, especially like these apex, you know, hunter male things, you know, um, they have an incredible sense of smell. Incredible sense of smell. Because it's how men have evolved in terms of, you know, this is how they were able to hunt. Right. They have these this sense of sight, you know, like they can see differently than how women see and they can smell differently how women can smell. Right. Uh, my partner has a nose like a bloodhound. And I try to just rub some some butter and honey in my hair earlier instead of doing the whole henna process. And he wasn't impressed. And that means he could obviously smell the difference, even though I'm just like, oh, my stuff is, you know, all sweet. You know, it's honey and water, but it's like, nah. -uh. Anyhow, um, if you're in interested in that hair cleansing, strengthening process, just let me know. I might upload a video of me doing it. 
So um, let's go back here. Oh, your thoughts and your flaws. He, 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 he worked, worked on it. it. He molded you. Got you how you needed to be. And he said, you know what? Cool. This is the type of woman I can put into a certain position. He may have married you. He may have been well-to-do for himself. He married you. He made you a damn housewife. Bitch, you ain't got to work. Clock out. Don't go back. Type shit. And what do we do? Get extremely comfortable. Dun, dun, dun. Ah! Something that you never do. That zoom in <laughs> has taken me. <laughs> yeah, don't get comfortable. Ever. I agree. Oh, oh shit. shit, well, I'm at home now. I ain't got to, I ain't got to clock in. Shit, we married now. I got my man. Hell, I got to look good for. I got my man. Hell, Hell I got to keep, keep my myself together for. I ain't going nowhere. So what you do? You sit at home. Before you know it, you just stuffing yourself, packing on weight, not doing shit. You gain 10 pounds. pounds. He was, he was like, like, you know what? I want to say something before she makes this point because she's about to make a really good point. And I'm only going to allow myself to do this for an hour. And her video is an hour uh, and 41, almost two hours. So um, with respect to her, I'm just going to go ahead and link the video so that uh, you can go to her channel and watch the rest of it. I think I'm going to give her maybe 15 more minutes or so. Um, but something I do, like I tell my partner to never like run up on me, right? Like, like don't surprise me. So um, I can be cooking. I can be chopping up a whole bunch of onions and garlic. You know, I, I like foods like that, leeks, scallions, and it, it doesn't smell too good, you know, but I always tell him, you know, like text me when you're 10 or 15 minutes away so that my hair is combed, my teeth are brushed, you know, I'm freshly showered, there's incense burning, the house is, you know, tidied up. Sometimes when I'm organizing things, I'll just kind of have it laid all out so I can see it because that's the way that my brain works. Um, I mean, I'm a very tidy person naturally, but like just when I'm organizing things, you might see a pile here, a pile here and a pile there. And well, that is technically, you know, <laughs> or, or disorganized organization, so to speak. And so I have all that away before he comes. Like I want to make sure the bed is made and that the pillowcases are changed and that there are fresh linens in his, you know, bathroom, like whatever it is. Like, I'm just like, just let me know so that I can prep. But what I do skip in doing all of that is makeup. And he loves a good lip. And I could definitely do better about getting my face together. Um, like I wear makeup when I go live and things like this, but oftentimes because I'm treating my skin at home, right? I mean, I, I see a dermatologist, you know, so my skin is very bare and, and, and breathing. Um, but between getting everything ready for him and like I'm coming out of the shower, but by the time he gets there, you know, I'm like in a towel. I'm, oh, hey, <laughs> didn't get to that face, but you know, <laughs> right? So, um, yeah. Oh, you. Yeah. So we ain't gonna we ain't gonna worry too much. You know, it went to the ass a little bit. We can we can deal with that. All right. You put on 15. It was like okay. It went to the thighs and the ass, a little bit on the hips. We ain't gonna say nothing. She is telling on me. And guess what? It is. It stacks on, it piles on. You become way too comfortable, way too relaxed. Your man may have initially said, he may have said something once you hit that 20. Girl. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Don't, don't, don't you think you need, you need to slow down a little bit? What you talking about? I look good. 
Yeah, you look good, baby. But I mean, I don't, we don't want you getting up there too much now. now. I mean, right look, now you good where you at? Look, got, but feel- she is telling all my business, and I mean all my business. <laughs> I have put on forty pounds since being with Mister Uppity. Okay. <laughs> happy, well-fed, like all this discomfort, love, whatever. And it happened the same way. It, it, it happened exactly how she's saying it. Like, oh, them 10 pounds went to the whoop and the whoop, whoop, whoop. And hey, I like that. That looks good right there. You know, 15, ah, oh, shucky, ducky, quack, quack. You know, like, and then finally the 20 is like, okay, well, you know, uh, we, we good here. And then... Me and my little quarantine 15 became a quarantine 20, became became a quarantine 25. And it's like, okay, babe. Uh, and I got really uncomfortable. And it made me sad. And the sadness actually made me a little bit more sluggish. Because I got to a point where I was just like, you know, working out, working out, working out. And not seeing the results that I wanted to see. Because, again, I'm not in my 20s anymore. I used to be able to work out for a week and see what I wanted to see. And I got to a point where like, and you guys have seen me since I put on all the weight. Like I've been live several times. Like I I put on all this weight months ago, months ago. Okay. So uh, you guys have seen it. Lucky for me, I'm a very tall person. So it does spread out, but it's still too much. And um, I'm like, you don't deserve this. You know, you deserve a better version of me. (laughs) But like, I haven't fixed it. So now what? (laughs) So now what, right? And you guys, I'm definitely gonna fix it. I I mentioned this before, but um, this is a very real conversation and I see why she said that it's uncomfortable. At the same time, I do think that, um, and maybe it's just me and the kind of black woman that I like to surround myself with, we love feedback. We love constructive criticism because so many of us really don't really don't have a clue. And we're like, well, why isn't he acting this way or that way or this or what, what's going on? And, you know, people like Shira and Crystal would just be like, girl, is this It's because of this, this and that. Right. They're the first <laughs> they're the first to tell you you chose wrong. Anyhow, I'm going to let this go for a while and then just. um Hopefully you guys will go and finish the video on her channel. Like you going any further, further this may be a problem. problem. You may yeah. have laughed at all. Try not to hurt your feelings too much. And you like, boy, please, whatever. Cheeseburger, chicken nugget, like chicken nugget and come. Cheeseburger, chicken nugget, cheese fry, ice cream, apple pie, milkshake, Taco Bell, McDonald's, double cheeseburger, soda. You think because you put diet on the damn soda, it wasn't going to do nothing. It went haywire. Now you hello, hello, <laughs> And your man told you when you hit that 20 pounds, when you hit that 20 pounds, too much. He, he told, told you. you he had yes, problems. he did. I don't give a fuck. I'm, I can do what I want to do. You tripping. Now, my response wasn't, I can do what I want to do. <laughs> that wasn't my response personally, but definitely. Um, I wasn't as proactive as I feel that I should have been. And now that I have different things going on, like it's just, it's still, you know, with all of my uh, writing and websites that are now monetized, I, I, I'm still very sedentary. And I used to upload, you know, my workouts and things, but I got to the point where I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm too uncomfortable to be working out in front of the camera. There have been, you know, a, a small subset of people who are like requesting workout videos. And I'm like, I'm just, uh, I'm not that comfortable. Every time I get on camera, I've got on a waist trainer because I've done what Danica is saying we do. No, your yeah, man is like, Man, I, I don't know about this. And a lot of us would say, oh, that's all shallow, Zanika. You, 
You, you, you teach a man to be shallow. No, no, I'm, I'm not. not. This, this is in the male's man. nature. This is what he's pre-programmed to be, sweetheart. I'm just letting you know. I'm, I'm just saying it out loud. And we are yeah, actually I'm similar. Not. I mean, if we're going to call men shallow about this, and I, I have a lot of empathy for the male condition. I don't have a whole lot of empathy for dusties. But I've got a whole lot of empathy for uh, masculinity, right? And and the condition of being um, of men being male. Um, women are like this too. Um, women are not like this with men, but boy, are we this way with children. So the way that she is saying that men are responding to women's beauty is the same way women respond to cute kids. We are so good to cute kids, and that's why sometimes they'd be so bad. They'd be so bad because we don't know how to act when we see them. You know, like if you go to a school, I was a teacher for a decade. You know, some of the worst behaved kids are some of the cutest kids. And some of the best behaved kids are, you know, the mediocre or, or less, you know, uh, looking, appearing children. And people will be harder on those children. Like they're harder on black children. They're harder on children with, you know, neurodivergence, harder, harder, harder on kids who, you know, Maybe they're smelly or dirty, their parents don't take good care of them, whatever it is. I mean, harder on those kids, even if they don't commit the same amount of crimes that the cute kid who's dressed well and their hair is done and their parents adore them, you know, like, I heard it said this way. I've heard women say, if my baby wasn't so cute, I'd have tossed that I'd toss that little kid out the window for crying all night, right? When women are talking about colicky babies, but the baby's so cute, you're like, oh, right? And you just melt because the baby is so adorable. And men have a similar similar dynamic with women. Obviously, I mean, not you know, no um, blankophilia aspect, but just in, in terms of a woman's beauty, sometimes. You know, when you're when you can do the splits both ways, you, you can get away with some things that a less flexible woman can't get away with. Sometimes when, you know, you're, you're very savvy when it comes to hair and makeup and you've got a great body, you know, you can get away with certain things. These men will claim to be so upset with Instagram models, but let one of those Instagram models give those men an iota of attention. All of a sudden she will become an angel to that man. They're, they only dislike her because they can't have her. Can't have her, can't afford her, can't reach her, can't contact her. She's she's too high to reach. Out of his league. Leagues away. But because they're so beautiful. I mean, I've heard men talk all kind of crazy about Bria Miles. But let Bria Miles say, hey, how are you doing? I think you're so interesting. I want to get to know you. Over. Game over. Let, you know, 40-something-year-old Bernice Burgos. Oh, you're you you hit the wall after 25. Let her come and say hi, <laughs> and see how it goes down. This is a woman who I mean, Ti Drake. I mean, the the, the names, the roster of you know high value whoever's that have you know been been vying for the attention of this woman. I made up in my mind in my head, and it's like you know what. Men, y'all should be shallow and y'all should care about your woman's physical shape and how she looks physically. I didn't do that. I'm just letting it be known what the issue is. Don't get mad at me. You, you put, put on all that extra weight because why? You really didn't give a fuck. Truth is, women are motivation for masculine men. Now, some men are not masculine and you don't really have to worry about that. But even going back as far as like, I used to be a cheerleader, obviously. Uh, I act like it, I talk like it, I sound like it. And I made the cheer squad like the year after Bring It On came out. So I, I mean, maybe it came out in that summer and then the next school year. I don't know, but I oh, a feeling myself. I know the whole movie. It is shameless. It is embarrassing. I mean, oh, oh my God. Um, but beautiful women are motivation. And this is sometimes how you motivate a man, especially in a world where he's not some hunter gatherer anymore. And he's not outside having to build, you know, a home out of sticks and stones and 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 um, clay dung, right? Um, 
This is how you motivate him when he's got a beautiful woman that um, he loves to be with. It's rewarding to be with her and it's scary to lose her. Motivation. You got comfortable. You felt like, like I got, got the man. And a lot of us get way too relaxed once we feel like, hey, I got him. Well, now, since you got to keep him, because little do you know, it's another woman out there that is catching his eye physically. Preach. We cannot neglect and sleep on the physical element and aspect of our relationships, ladies. And a lot of us do because we feel like our men should think like us, which is to what? Just, just take me as I am and love me because, I, because I'm a woman and because I'm a woman that makes me special and that makes me a pride. It sounds good, but the reality of it is, sis, men are looking. Like I said, that is what that's what gets a lot of us in the door in the first place. Men overlook a lot of our bullshit because we look good. We look a particular way. So once you start letting yourself go, your man, he could. I'm not saying he doesn't love you anymore. I'm not saying that he doesn't honor you or respect you or anything like that. But that is a thing, ladies. Your, Your man, man can, can definitely start to stray away or distance himself because he's no longer physically attracted to you. And this is probably where I'm going to end the video. Um, this is a very powerful point. And again, I agree with her 100% on this. Because in reality, um, let me go ahead and say something very um, disagreeable and colorable. I mean, uh, what is it disagreeable and... Um, <laughs> Whatever. I just said colorable. I don't know why. Um, people say a man cannot cheat on you and love you. And I vehemently disagree with that. I vehemently disagree because I've seen it too many times. I've seen too many men who are in love head over heels with their wives, but they cheat. Whether it's a fling or it's a long-term affair, I've seen it too many times. And oftentimes it's because the wife either let herself go physically or she let herself go uh, spiritually. And when I say spiritually, I mean whatever got to her spirit and got into her mind, she became attitudinal. She became this, you know, verbal, you know, hailstorm of a woman where she's like, you know, talking to him crazy, you know, kicking him where it hurts, you know, saying all kind of things that, that, you know, making comments that go straight for the, the jugular vein. And some of these men, it's like, you know, they love their wives, but they don't know how to get it back to good. It's like, well, what do I do? If I tell her to lose weight, she's going to start crying and I hate to see her cry. If I tell her she hurt my feelings, she's going to talk to me like I'm not a man. Speaking of which, I got a man and that's him calling. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I gotta go. I am up a tea and I am out of here.